What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the seventh Python machine learning with scikit-learn for investing or whatever you want tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be building on the last video and basically acquiring our data. Um, so, like I was saying, this is the hardest part, getting the data and kind of organizing the data so later you can basically categorize all your data sets as zeros and ones. Um, and then, you know, create classes or, you know, of you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever. So uh, for us, we want to eventually get everything down to the point where we have, um, you know, a bunch of features. So we might have, you know, 30 features uh, to each company. But at the end of the day, either that company is a 0 or a 1. And we would say maybe a 0 is a do not act, a false, a sell, and a 1 is a buy, as in that's a good company, we want to buy that company, we think they'll do well in the next decade. So uh, so our data here, uh, basically what we've got is we've got this outputted table that basically has, you know, date, the Unix timestamp, the ticker, and their DE ratio. Now, to decide whether or not that company is a good company to invest in, we want to compare it to some sort of benchmark. Uh, and generally the accepted benchmark is the quote-unquote market or generally the S&P 500 or sometimes we would compare against the Dow Jones. Uh, but I, I think that, you know, so we're going to be using S&P 500 stocks. So why not compare it against all of the stocks in the S&P 500 and use the S&P 500 index? So to do that, uh, we're going to use, we could parse Yahoo and actually on... Um, on that data set that we have, um, there is about half of the data is, you know, compared to the S&P 500, and then the other half of the data is percent change relative to the S&P 500. So at some point, Yahoo changed their mind on how they wanted to, like, report uh, um, the difference. And uh, we, we could, you know, use our testing set um, up to the point before they made the change, and then... Uh, from there classify the other stuff or something like that. We could definitely do something like that, but um, I'd rather have all of the data you know, capable of being a testing set uh, and then have future data we could actually make you know, investments based on this data and stuff like that. So anyways, uh, we're just going to go to an outside source and grab all of the S&P 500 data. So for a lot of data sets, you can use this website, quandl.com. It's Q-U-A-N-D-L.com. And we're going to just search for uh, S&P 500, and it'll search the data. Also, just while we're waiting, uh, you can sign up for an account, and you can. They have a really great API here, and you you have a certain amount of API. I, actually, I think they're in, unlimited now if you make an account. If you don't have an account, it's like 500 a, a day or something. It's crazy. Anyway, um, we want this one right here. But they have a really great and easy to use API. So if you want to use their website to grab data sets, um, you can do that uh, via the API. And what's nice is their API follows the same format as um, um, basically like all their data sets follow the same format. So it's really easy to work with their data because it's a very simple format. Anyway, uh, maybe I'll have some more videos on them later. But basically, you'd want to download a data set that's encompassing between the or the year maybe uh, 2000. I think we don't think we have any data prior to 2000, all the way up until you can take current if you want. And then, so this is our, you know, the S&P 500. That, that's fine. Uh, what we want to go ahead and do is once you have that data, just pop on over here to download. Hit download, and it really doesn't matter. But for our purposes, we're going to take it as a CSV. So we download that, and once you have that downloaded, click and drag that into whatever directory the script is in, because that's how I'm going to code it, as if you've done that. So uh, now we're ready to move my mic. I'm now we're ready to go ahead and begin coding. So we'll come into key stats here, and um, we'll come down basically to here. And let's go ahead and define another data frame. And this data frame is going to be S&P 500 underscore DF. And that's going to equal pd.dataframe.from underscore CSV. And then you just specify the CSV name. And in our case, this is all caps here, Yahoo dash index underscore GSPC, which is the typical, um, you know, letters for the S&P 500, uh, then .csv, and boom, that's it. That's that 
it's that easy to load uh, CSV into a data frame. So we're done there. Now we've got the S&P 500 loaded into a data frame. And basically at every step of the way, we want to compare how is the current stock price doing in comparison to the S&P 500 index. So for each dir, that's fine. We come all the way down basically to um, right in here where we grab the value of the stock. Uh, basically, we'll just come right here. And we're going to add another try and accept. Uh, recently, people gave me a hard time for all the try and accepts I write. Um, I treat try and accept as if it's a bit of logic, and I use it as a fail safe. Sorry if you do not enjoy my try and accept usage. Anyway, um, for, in this case, we're going to use it as both logic and uh, a bit of a fail safe because the S&P, like f the the data that we've pulled from uh, Yahoo that I've, I've supplied you guys, that data might have been pulled say on a Saturday, and if we go to Quandle and this Quandle dump is not going to have data for the S&P 500 on a Saturday. It's only going to have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Fridays. So we're going to have a little bit of an issue there. Um, so I'm going to use try and accept to, to solve that and use it as you might use an if statement. Um, so I'm sorry. Anyway, try, uh, and we're going to say the SP500 underscore date equals date time dot from timestamp. And we're going to use the Unix time timestamp and convert it to a string from time. And we're going to say we want this timestamp to resemble colon or uh, percent sign year dash percent month this percent day. The reason why we're doing this is this is the date format of the, the data set that we just got. So let me pull this up real quick in notepad. So here it is. Uh, so this is our data, right? So it's, you know, year, month, day. And then it, this is the value and open, high, low, close and adjusted close. So actually open, high, low, close, volume, adjusted close. Anyway, that's the date that we're going to look for. And then, and then basically what we want to do is we want to find the row that contains that date. So we would just do something like this, like row equals SP500 underscore DF. Um, and then we're going to say where, so it's the S&P 500 data frame where the S&P 500 uh, underscore df dot index since it'll be indexed by date when we loaded it in up above uh, where the index equals uh, s and 500 underscore date so this data right here so that'll be the row that we're interested in and then finally we're gonna say the sp500 underscore value so from that row is the float version of row and then what value in row where we're looking for adjusted um, actually I don't think it used an underscore let's pull it up real quick yeah so just adjusted space close so that um, so that's our S&P 500 value but what if um, you know our, our cheat is that we pulled from Yahoo is pulled on a weekend or something like that as a few of them are well, we have a slight issue there. So we're going to say try. And then if that fails, we're going to run this exception that basically is this exact code right here. So copy that, paste. And instead of Unix time, we're going to take a prior stamp of uh, the S&P 500 value. So we're just going to say 259,200. Um, so for anyone who's curious what that is, it's three days. Uh, so uh, every day. Have, you know, every hour, let's say, or there's 60 seconds in a minute times 60 an hour times 24, 86, 400 in a day times three days, 259, 200 seconds. So that will subtract three days. That will get us out of the weekend um, and then out of any singular day um, holidays. So hopefully that will work. That will cover pretty much every every issue we would have. That's not the best logic, but this logic right here is a lot easier than the logic that will determine whether or not it's a weekday and if it or a weekend rather or a weekday, and then if it needs to like pick a different day. So this is some really easy, <laughs> easy form of that logic that would be required. So uh, we have now the S and P 500 uh, information, and now we need to pull the stock price. So the value here, that's all fine and dandy. That's a D, or yeah, the debt to equity ratio. Now we want to actually pull um, the stock value. So we're going to say stock underscore price. 
And stock price equals, um, at least for now, we're going to have to come back to this most likely. Um, but the stock price, well, I don't have it up right now, but um, let me pull it up. Uh, it was in backups, fundamental, intra-quarter, key stats, A. Okay, so we pulled one up. So here it is. And the stock price is this number right here. It's this bold number before the percent change and all of that. So let's say that's the number we want to parse from the website. We would copy that, uh, control U or right click for view source, control F find that 33.65 and we see it's encased between this you know slash small big bold and then the closing so to parse that really simply we would just say um, stock price equals float and then source dot split and we're going to split by um, this small slash small big and bold so we'll copy that we want to split by that, and we want the value that's on the uh, uh, right-hand side, basically, of that. So that would be 1. And then dot split again. And this time we split. Where did I do it? Here we go. Nope, that's not what I want. What? Where is what I want? <laughs> this split uh, by, say we split by this. Okay, so like this data right here. And in fact, let's just split by this. So copy that then split by the closings, basically. And we want the left-hand side of that, so the zeroth element or the first element there. And that will be our stock price. Now, let's go ahead and print, just to see if we have any errors up to this point, stock price colon stock, oops, stock price colon comma stock price. And then we'll do a ticker, something like that. Um, and we called this literally ticker. So let's save and run that really quick and just see what we got. Uh, we'll just stop that there. Um, so we can see that we're spitting out a bunch of stock prices. Cool. Um, so we'll close out of this. Uh, we're going to comment this out because we don't really need to be doing that anymore. And now we want to actually add this stuff to our data frame. So we come up here, we've got DE ratio. Let's go ahead and add two more uh, things. We've got DE ratio, we've got price, and then we've got the SP500. So price and SP500 need to be added. So down here, we've got df.append. We're going to add all that stuff. And let's go ahead and be proactive here. And after every comma, hit enter in this list. So enter there, enter there, enter there. And we're going to add uh, some more. So we had DE ratio. Uh, then we had price. Price equals uh, stock underscore price. And then we had SP500. And that was equal to SP500 underscore value. So now, um, that should be really it. Uh, we're already saving that well. So let's go ahead and run that. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and run it from, you know, for each dir in stock list called 1 to, let's say, 25. Um, just so we don't waste like a lot of time on video, I, you can run the whole thing if you'd like. We're going to rerun this quite a few times before we're actually completely done. Um, and I'll let you know like <laughs> when you should run the full one. Um, so anyways, uh, that's done, that's saved, and here we have um, the basically the new CSV. So here we've got you know uh, just a worthless index, but then the date, we've got the ticker, uh, obviously Unix, timestamp, We've got the D ratio, the price, and the compared to the S&P 500. So now we can compare percentage change uh, between the price and the S&P 500 um, index. And that way we can kind of say, like, is the stock beating the market or is it not beating the market? And then uh, if it is beating the market, we treat that D E ratio as a class of beating the market. And if not, we treat it as not beating the market. Um, I know I keep saying it, but I just want to keep stressing, I really don't think just alone, debt to equity ratio is a good way to value a company because um, you need to take on debt to make investments. So uh, we're just using this as an example and I do promise we will add more features um, 
but it's useful to have one or two features so we can actually graph it at first and then we can ditch the graph once everyone understands what you know the purpose of the graph is uh, and then we can have you know 20 features or 30 features or whatever and uh, do some actually probably some really cool stuff I hope that we'll find something interesting here anyway um, that's it for this video I'm gonna cut it off here in the next video we'll be talking about uh, you know right now we're just we've cataloged a lot of the data uh, but then we want to actually begin to compare price in the S&P 500 and do like a change there um, so we can actually classify. So uh, that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, subscriptions, and the donations. And until next time.